What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we've travelled down to Kent to visit Hobbs Parker Classic Vehicle Auction. Now this is a new auction house for us, been meaning to come down here for quite some time now and they have got plenty to look around. Now this is actually an online auction which ends today at midday so we're going to be looking around some of the lots and then we'll watch what they go for online. Anyway, is there any bargains to find? Let's find out and take a look around. The first vehicle we have stumbled across, and it wouldn't have been one of my videos without a Ford. This Mark 1 Ford Escort van was supplied to this lawnmower company back in 1969 and has stayed with them ever since, so it's only got one owner from new. It's fair to say the Escort van has earned its keep. Since purchasing it back in 19. 69, it's covered 144,000 miles with that one owner, but it still presents itself in great condition. The inside is lovely, the seats have got no nasty tears or rips in them, and whilst we're talking about the condition, the bodywork is lovely. There's no visible rust, there's no nasty holes that you're going to have to worry about getting welded up. It really is a nice and presentable classic van. I also love the fact that the original sign writing is still on the Escort van. Can't beat a commercial classic Ford. Anyway, let's have a look under the bonnet. Under the bonnet is just as presentable as the rest of the vehicle. It's fair to say it must have had some kind of a restoration in its lifetime, but it's absolutely lovely. One thing I did just notice is instead of the wings being welded on, they are now bolted on, but that is really useful for any repairs that need to be done in the future. Really do like this Escort van and it's estimated today at Hobbs Parker auction for 25 to 30 thousand pounds. The Escort van has got about 40 seconds left. Current bid is 15 thousand pounds. Three, two, one. The Mark 1 Ford Escort van had a highest bid of £15,000, so I can only assume that is unsold. We've now stumbled across this 1985 Ford Capri 2 litre laser. Now it's got a bit of a bargain estimate, I'll let you guys know that once we've looked around it, but is it a bargain for a reason? Now I've popped the bonnet and looked at the strut tops, they've been repaired but not to the to the highest standard shall we say and then we've got this addition in the engine bay this bottle of flash which i believe has got some fuel in it to get it running if you follow the pipe it goes to the bottom of the fuel pump so yeah this is going to need a little bit of tlc taking a look inside of the capri the clocks are showing 36,000 miles and it's very weathered in here you've got the armrest that has seen better days and also the driver's seat has got plenty of rips in it would certainly need some attention but the main downfall for the Capri is really the bodywork as you can see a sizeable hole in this driver's front wing and also if we pan up to the roof it comes with its factory fitted sunroof but it's all starting to bubble and rust up around there I think it would be in need of a full respray to be completely honest it does come with plenty of spare parts in the boot though which is always good and now for the exciting part the estimate on the two litre laser is just two to two and a half thousand pounds i wonder what that's going to go for the capri is just starting to end now although there's a bit of a bidding war going on it's currently sat at three thousand six hundred pounds as you can see, three seven now, so it's adding more time on every time someone bids. But I think it was sat at about two thousand five hundred pounds for ages. It's got thirteen seconds to go, and it's at three thousand eight hundred pounds. I think it's probably going to sell for that, but someone might put another cheeky bid in. Nope, that's it. The Capri two litre laser sold for four thousand one hundred and eighty pounds. Our first mini of the sale. This is a. 1967 Morris Mini Super Deluxe. Now this is described to be in its original paint which is quite remarkable. I really do feel like this would polish up quite well if 
the winning bidder wanted to do that. Now it's had three owners from new and it's said to have the original floor pans still in there with no visible signs of welding to this Mini at all. Well, one thing I love about these early Minis is how basic and simple they are. Look at that small skinny steering wheel and also you've got no handles to get out. You've got a cable. Yeah, love that. Taking a brief walk around the Mini, it's not rotten like some of them, it really isn't hanging at all. Someone has already had the boot mat up to check for rust and that is all clear. Spare wheel is in there as well. Now one feature, another feature I like about these early Minis is the fact that that number plate comes down so you could have something hanging out the boot and your number plate is still visibly red. How quirky, wouldn't get that in an electric car these days. Anyway, the estimate on the Mini Super Deluxe is eight and a half to nine and a half thousand pounds. But I've got a question for you guys. If you were to purchase this, would you keep the paintwork as it is, looking a bit rough and ready, or would you get the machine polisher on it and have it all tarted up? Let me know in the comment section below. It's stuck at six thousand pounds. There hasn't really been much of a bidding war with this one. It's been at six for quite a while now and it looks like it's going to go nope there we go someone waited right to the last minute and now it's 6-1 so there's another 30 seconds overtime bidding now we're down to 10 seconds again I wonder if someone else is going to come in with a cheeky bid or whether it'll go for 6-1 no there you go the Morris Mini Super Deluxe sold for £6,875 what are we looking around next well we're looking around a Austin 1300 GT, which is finished in this bronze yellow. Very striking colour indeed. And it also has that vinyl roof, which I absolutely love. There's something I want to show you guys in here though. If we take a quick glance. It's got a blue carpet. How about that? You've got yellow slash sort of bronze exterior, and then you've got a blue carpet in there. How about that for an 80s theme? Also, something I just noticed is quite quirky. So it doesn't have a interior light in the middle up there. It has one above the driver's pillar. <laughs> I can't even start this section without spotting the difference. No wing mirror. Wing mirror. <laughs> well, that's uh, certainly quirky enough. Anyway, under the bonnet we have a 1275cc engine which is all looking in lovely condition. The mileage is stating just 55,000 miles. As I say, go back on old documents and you might be able to gauge whether that is genuine mileage or not, but it's a really clean motor from what we've seen so far. Now, long time viewers of the channel will know I'm a massive Ford fan, but I do love looking around different vehicles, makes and models, and this is just quite a, a quirky looking rear end. Very nice and presentable, and I did just read up on the description that it's got an invoice from 1996, and the mileage back then was 40 odd thousand, so whether it's been around the clock or not, it's still a great example, and the estimate at Hobbs Parker Classic Car Auction is five to six thousand pounds. When I looked on it, when I had about two minutes to go, it was on five thousand pounds, so shot up, and it's now on six one, six two, it's on six nine. Fill it up. Someone's got to fill it up. It's got 50 seconds to go now. Seven thousand. There we go. Ten seconds to go on the Austin 1300 GT. Five seconds. Four seconds. I think everyone's had enough. There we go. The Austin 1300 GT sold for seven thousand eight hundred and ten pounds. Whilst I'm up at the auction today, I thought I'd just jump back in the van because I want to thank and introduce this week's video sponsor, Autodoc. Now I get plenty of messages asking me where I shop for car parts and Autodoc is the number one place for me. They are Europe's leading online retailer for car parts and their quick and simple app makes it really easy and straightforward to order car parts on your mobile phone. All you need to do is enter your registration and then it will pick up the vehicle that you want in the parts for. And there we go. All we need to do now, top of the screen, let's search for some front struts. So with Shock Absorber, 
written into the top search bar, you can see that there are so many different brands that you can choose from. Really well-known brands and others that you've never heard before, but I think what I'll choose is a set of KYB front shock absorbers. Now I've added them to my basket, I can just scroll down and don't forget to use my discount code MITCH5 for a cheeky discount on your order. As I've just shown you guys, the Autodoc app is so easy to navigate. Now their main goal is to provide high quality car parts at affordable prices so that you can enjoy owning a car in perfect condition. So what are you waiting for? Check the Autodoc link in the first line of the description below and don't forget to add my coupon MITCH5 at checkout. I'd just like to thank Autodoc once again for sponsoring this week's video. Now let's get back into the auction house. Now I must admit we've just moved from chrome metal bumpers to plastic bumpers. So this is a bit more of a future classic but still creating its own name in the future classic world. Now this is a 2001 Citroen VTS. You'd normally see these down South End every weekend going up and down the strip. But nowadays these are quite hard to find in good condition. This example has only covered 52,000 miles. It's got MOT until November this year. If we take a look inside you've got quite the striking design on the door cards which is also on the seats as well but I love this interior I think it's really cool it does also come with its handbook which is placed in the vehicle it also comes with its last tax disc from back in 2014 they paid 150 quid a lot of money to tax it probably gone up now the bonnets now popped on the VTS and these come standard with a 1.6 litre engine. Nice and nippy, 16 valve. I'm not quite sure on the brake horsepower. I'm gonna have to search it up and I'll whack it on the screen now. But yeah, a real, don't know whether to say, iconic hot hatch, but certainly a lot of people have fond memories of these cars and they're getting few and far between on the UK roads these days. And if we just go back down to this front wheel, it looks like it's got a set of high spec calipers in there, which are a really good upgrade. It's had the machine polish for over some sections, like here, but not over here, because it's still nice and swirly. You can actually see the difference there. So there is room for improvement to tidy this up and make it a nice and presentable vehicle. It's had some bodywork panels sprayed and some not, but it's still not terrible. A nice factory sunroof as well. Now this is estimated two and a half to three thousand pounds. I don't think that's too bad for this motor. Once it's all cleaned up and looking, well, in, in better condition, then uh, I think it could sell for considerably more. Is someone gonna fill it up? No. The Citroen Saxo VTS sold for £2,090. Moving on, we're now looking around this 1998 Ford Puma, slightly more of the future classic once again, but this has covered only 13,800 miles in the 26 years that it's been on the UK roads. Now, that means it's only covered roughly 530 miles a year, which is just crazy to me. Now unfortunately, this is the slightly less desirable Puma. Many of these came with the 1.7 engine, but this has got the 1.4. But don't let that take the beauty of this away, because in here, it's it just nothing looks warm. It all looks very nice, and dare I say it, almost new. Seats have barely been sat in, the floor mats are still the original Puma ones which is lovely to see and the door cards do not have a single imperfection on them so as for the interior it's lovely. The Puma is on the road with MOT until March 2025. Now I'm going to try my best not to nitpick too much I seem to do that with the low mileage cars because you expect them to be immaculate but on the roof here you've got some signs of where bird poo has been left on in the past which is a little bit of a shame and also the wing mirrors or door mirrors as people love to call them these days have faded in the sun 
So yeah, would need probably a nice, nice machine polish and get them wing mirrors painted. Here's a brief look under the bonnet, the 1.4 ZTEC engine. As I say, it's unfortunate that it's not the 1.7 because yeah, that would be lovely. Now, I was reading the description and it's got eight Ford main dealer service stamps in the original service book and that's up to 7,000 miles in April 2007. It's a shame that didn't, well, it wasn't carried on because that would be great to have a full Ford service history on this such low mileage car. It's great to look around such a low mileage Puma here at Hobbs Parker today. Now, the estimate for this is very strong at five to six thousand pounds. So let's find out what that goes for. The Puma's up next. Less than 20 seconds to go, it's on 3,500 pounds. Someone did put a bid in with about two minutes to go, which bumped it up 200 quid, but I'm not sure if anyone else is gonna have a go. Three, two, one. The 1.4 Ford Puma sold for £4,180. We're looking around a lovely BMW next in this 325i SE Auto. The auto bit is uh, the part that slightly lets it down for me, but it is a two-door model. I really do like these E30s. I especially like the E30 Tourings, but yeah, we're looking around this one and it's got a current registered lady owner since 1995. So it's been owned for quite some time. But check out this interior. How clean are them door cards? Looks nice and fresh. There's sort of a, a light brown interior and the seats almost look like they're slightly blue. But I really do like this interior. N nice and presentable. You can tell it's been cleaned and looked after throughout its life. Under the bonnet we have the 2.5 litre straight six engine. You've got some heat shielding protection here that's been worn away over the years. Be good to get that replaced because you don't want them spark plug leads to get too hot. But in the engine bay, everything is looking really presentable. There's no massive rust holes or anything like that to worry about. It's also got two screen wash bottles, which I believe one's for the front headlights and one's for the windscreen. As I always say, great to get some spares with a vehicle as well. The battery is located in the boot and let's have a look at the original toolkit that you get. Now the only thing that's missing from this looks to be the locking wheel nut, <laughs> but it might still come with the sale. And also in the boot, I'm unsure whether this would have come from factory or not, but it's got a Pioneer six disc CD player. Love that. Anyway, a lovely example of a E30 with all of the alloy wheels looking like they've been recently refurbished as well. Now the estimate on this at Hobbs Parker is 14 to 16 thousand pounds. BMW 325i, that's just going under 10 seconds and it's on 11 thousand pounds. Haven't actually seen a bid on this one but it does say current bid, so that'll win it. There we go. I believe that the BMW 325i remains unsold. It's a lovely setup here at Hobbs Parker, whereas they've got this massive unit, all the doors open, so it's nice and bright in there. And then they've also got classics that are out here, like this Mark III Fiesta that we're gonna look around now. Now this is quite a remarkable Mark III Fiesta. It's only had one registered lady owner from new. Uh, the service history includes 20 Ford main dealer stamps and that was up to 2019. So yeah, it's, it's definitely been serviced and looked after enough. The only downside is there's an RAC battery on it. <laughs> but we've got the 1.1 litre engine under the bonnet and all around here is nice and original. The wings have not been touched. They're welded on like they should be. And yeah, overall looks nice could do with some cleaning up wax oil certain areas just to sort of keep it that clean and preserve it. The Fiesta is finished in this dark blue uh, with the two-tone grey at the bottom. I quite like it. It's, uh, it's slightly different. 
does have a few ripples in the door might be able to catch them here but probably just car park things now not only has this just had one lady owner from new it's only showing a warranted 16,000 miles from new which is quite unbelievable i just don't know what happens to these cars they must just be taken out on a sunday to go to the shops <laughs> and then placed back in the garage the Fiesta is on the road. It's got MOT, but a very short one. It's only valid until the 15th of October of this year. Uh, we're currently attending this auction on the 10th of October. So yeah, you need to get it home ASAP and get another ticket on it. Now, it is starting to go in a few areas. Just down here, the bottom of the wing and this door, where the seal is, they all like to sort of go in them areas but that can be addressed if you if you get that back to bare metal and get some paint on there and then some sealant you might be able to stop it from ruining the whole door a lovely original dealer sticker in the rear window still now with low mileage classics comes higher estimates now this one is estimated at two and a half to three and a half thousand pounds so we'll find out what that makes it's currently still on its opening bid of two thousand pounds and it's only got 30 seconds to go no that's gonna go unsold yep i believe the mark III fiesta remains unsold we're looking at around this 1986 audi quattro coupe now this has spent some time on the Isle of Man, so we'll need re-registering in the UK. But from the off, it doesn't look terrible. It's just, dare I say it, might have been neglected slightly. As we take a look inside, the driver's seat is a little bit worn. <laughs> but it looks all right. It's very dusty in here. I think it's probably not been used for some time. I don't believe it's got a valid MOT on it. Oh, look at that. There's a really cool digital display down there by the gear stick. I feel like with a few weekends work, this interior could look a lot better. In its lifetime, the Audi has covered 134,000 miles. I believe this is the 2.3 litre four cylinder engine and quite a quirky setup I'm, I'm used to sort of the the bog standard radiator at the front engine behind it but it's almost like on this right hand side the near side you've got the radiator set up and then the engine is sort of plonked next to it yeah fairly quirky I'm not quite sure what power these produce but yeah I'm certainly sure it's a rapid car a little bit scabby under the bonnet could do with some attention but it's all there the Audi Quattro is a couple of different shades of white. It certainly had a few repairs. It's got this lovely vent in the rear quarter, but it's proven to be quite the rust spot. It's attracted some rust there, but yeah, I feel like this really isn't too far gone. Someone could get this back on the road, get it re-registered in the UK and start enjoying it. Now the estimate for this at Hobbs Parker is seven and a half to eight thousand pounds 10 seconds left on the Audi well five now five thousand two hundred pounds and it's gonna go I think yep that's gone the Audi Quattro coupe sold for five thousand seven hundred and twenty pounds we've just gone from one project to another project in this genuine barn find Peugeot 205 now this is a GRD diesel the little bit of paper in the windscreen it says that it starts instantly gearbox is good it comes with plenty of manuals service history um, and the VIN plate is in the office it's got full service history up to 52,000 miles in 1991 when it was last MOT'd someone has quite literally just dragged this out of the barn still plenty of cobwebs in here smells a bit musty but what more can you expect? It's great to see that it's actually still in the barn fine state. No one's even tried to wash it or clean it. I mean, from, from the outside, I don't think it looks too bad. Uh, am I crazy for saying that? But it doesn't look like it's rotted or got too much rust on it. If we just take this rear arch, for example, that is fairly clean. Yeah, there's a little bit, but 
Yeah, it just makes you wonder though, what, what is this worth? What would someone pay for that? It's a Mordor 205 and it's a diesel. Here is that trusty diesel engine which is said to be running. I would really like to get the cam belt replaced firstly because <laughs> you don't know how long that's been on there. Now, it's a bit of a shame because just as I was praising the Peugeot's structural integrity, we found a hole there. I'm not going to poke my thumb through it, but yeah, there was a bit of daylight there, so that's definitely going to need repairing. But who knows? Someone could get it back on the road. And the estimate on this is nice and cheap. Bargain price almost. 500 to 600 pounds. The little Peugeot 205 barn finds has got 30 seconds left on the online bidding platform. I reckon that is sold. The Peugeot 205 GRD sold for £500. We've now found a 1980 Ford Cortina GL in this striking yellow. Now, on the side of the wing, it states it's a 2.3 S. But if we take a glance under the bonnet, there is a Ford Pinto in the bay. Now, this is stickered up as a 1600 Pinto. So... Yeah, not, not the 2.3 we were expecting, but um, it's all been painted up. I'm just going to show you guys a brief pan around the engine. It's got quite a bit of overspray where it's been restored at, at certain times. A brand new battery. I assume it starts and runs. It is tax and MOT exempt, but I'm just going to show you a little bit more of the body condition because it's not too healthy under there. It's a shame. I think the Cortina has had a bit of a hard life. You can see the scuttle starting to crack here. Uh, that, that's just filler that's in the scuttle. And if we come over here and look in this wheel arch, it's been plated up before, but there's a big gaping hole down the bottom there, which is a shame. It's, it's going to need all stripping back, all of that under seal and paint stripping off and finding out how rotten it is. And the rear section isn't too happy either. There's there's plenty of rust on this Cortina, unfortunately, but the estimate does reflect that. The Cortina has a aftermarket sunroof, which has been plonked in the middle of its vinyl roof, which is, yeah, it's seen better days. We do still have the original brown interior. For the best part, looks in good condition. It, it looks in good nick. Yeah, you've got a baggy headrest, but it's all complete. The door cards are there. You've still got the kick panels that are in brown. You've still got the brown carpet. So it's not terrible in here. The only thing that I personally don't like is you've got these, well, someone's made up these sill protectors or sill covers, and it just looks like they're made out of a bit of tape. And it, it just makes you question what's under there. The Cortina 2.3 S badges are making me laugh. Um, it's got that 1.6 Pinto under the bay, and the description also states it's a 1.6, so I assume that is what's on the logbook as well. Now, I did say that the estimate of the Cortina reflects the condition of it. Now, it's only estimated two and a half to three thousand pounds. So, if someone really wanted a project, if they wanted to strip this all down, they could make it a 2.3s. Anyway, let's find out what that goes for. The yellow Cortina is up now. We checked the bidding at about 10 minutes to go and it was £1,800 but now it's gone up to £2,321. Oh, there you go, there's a bid. So let's just iron another bid. It just went 2421 and now it's 2521 and it's gone on to overtime bidding. There you go, 2621, 2721. Is anyone going to put one last bid in? There we go. That's gone. The Ford Cortina GL sold for £2,993. I really do like to push myself out of my comfort zones at these classic car auctions and record different and quirky vehicles. How about this, a DKW Junior? Now this was first registered in Cyprus in March 1961, but in the same year it was imported into the UK by a RAF serving member. The description states that the DKW has the same family owners from new, 
father and daughter. It is a right hand drive, I believe all the vehicles from Cyprus are right hand drive. Nice little DKW Junior on the dashboard. As you can imagine from a car from 1961, a fairly basic interior. This does come with the import documentation still. With the bonnet open, it's revealed the 748cc engine. Now, taking a glance over it, it looks very similar to a side valve engine that you might find in a 100 e But with the 100 es they're rear-wheel drive. But this is actually a front-wheel drive application, so very interesting setup. You've got the radiator, which is actually behind the engine and not at the front of the vehicle. So, um, yeah, pretty peculiar car. Um, it's also... I know my dad can't see it, but I think these wings almost look like Anglia wings, almost, almost, with the bonnet down they do. But um, yeah, very interesting car to look around. It's almost in this sort of, this mustardy green colour with the white roof. The DKW Junior is estimated four and a half to five and a half thousand pounds. As they always say, find another. I wonder how many of these are on the UK roads currently. Can't be many of them. I believe the DKW Junior remains unsold. Check out this interior. We're now looking around this 1973 Ford Mustang. And I don't think I've ever looked around a Mustang, but this one just caught my attention. Look how cool the interior is. Look at that steering wheel as well. Really, really like that. Now, one other slightly quirky thing is, so once the roof is down, this actually turns pillarless. There's a little window winder behind here. And if we just wind that down, it turns into a pillarless car. So you can imagine that with the roof off, close the door. All the windows down, that'd be brilliant. That'd be so cool. And it's also finished in this lovely sort of baby blue. I'm not quite sure on the specific Ford color. The Ford Mustang is MOT and tax exempt. It's currently kept in a heated and dehumidified garage. It was imported by the current owner from Holland in February 2023. It's now registered and on the UK roads. So let's have a look under that massive bonnet. Under that huge bonnet, we have got a 4.1 litre straight six engine. There it is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a massive engine bay. You've got basically all of this dead space here, a massive radiator. The Ford Mustang is said to have been driven to the sale, which is a nice bit of reassurance that you get when you're buying a classic. It also states in the description that the electric roof is in perfect working condition and it's estimated 12 to 15,000 pounds. Mustang is up now. It's got 20 seconds left, but it's been sat at 10,000 pounds and I'm pretty sure the estimate was 12 to 15, so I assume this is going to go unsold. Yeah, it's reaching the last few seconds now. I believe the Ford Mustang remains unsold. Well, there we have it. That was my first time at visiting the Hobbs Parker Classic Vehicle Auction down in Kent. Now it was really good to get down there. I've seen it online a few times and it's just one I've been meaning to tick off and actually attend. Now the reason why I haven't been it able to get down there is because it's in the weekday and I do still work full time but I took the day off and ventured down there on the Thursday. It's been a couple of weeks now I've let the auction results come up onto their website but there's quite a few lots that are missing. Now, I presume they're unsold but it would just be nice to see them and just for them to say unsold uh, because without that I'm sort of in limbo whether to say they're definitely unsold or whether they might actually sell in the next coming weeks. I think next time I head down to Hobbs Parker, I'm going to manage it slightly differently. So they're open for viewing on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and the Thursday morning before the timed auctions end. Now what I will do next time is I'll go down on maybe the Tuesday or the Wednesday. Then I can have the whole day viewing and I can create a really good video. 
And then what I'm going to do is on the Thursday, when all the lots start to finish, I'm going to have it up on my laptop and I can watch them. And I feel like that will create a much better video uh, because then once I've looked around the lots, it will then cut to me the next day on my laptop watching it end. Uh, I feel like that would make the video flow a little better because what we've done in this video is I was actually on the way home and recording the vehicles but nonetheless it was a good auction to attend I really enjoyed the selection of vehicles some real cool and quirky motors some that I wouldn't usually look around please do let me know your pick of the auction in the comment section below I'm not too sure when Hobbs Parker holds their next classic vehicle auction, but what I will do is I'll leave their website link in the description below if any of you guys are interested in their next classic sale. Anyway, it was good to branch out and visit another auction. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like, and if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel to see more. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one, I'll see you guys later. What on earth am I recording now? It's a helicopter engine. And it's not just any old helicopter engine. It's a Rolls Royce helicopter engine. Very interesting lot. We've now found another classic Ford in this 1980 Ford Cortina GL. It's in this striking yellow colour. It's got 2.3 s on the side of it but when you take a glance under the engine bay it's got the striking blue two litre pinto not a two -liter i'll pinto. know it's not a two litre pinto <laughs> Blue button. Beep.